Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council, navigating the human experience together. Half a day, Tiro, and welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and today we're talking about the culture of connecting. And leading us in our chat today is the managing director of Guampedia, Rita Nauta. Rita, welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. Half a day, and Tiro, Catherine, so nice to be here. <laughs> this is Masi for having me. And our pleasure. Uh, for those that haven't yet taken advantage of the opportunity to discover the wealth of Guampedia online. Well, what, what are you guys all about? Uh, well, it's interesting that um, being on the Humanities Half Hour because Guampedia really started out as a humanities project out of the Guam Humanities oh, Council. Really? Yes, back in, way back uh, in 2002. And then, um, so it, it was a national effort in terms of, there were a lot of uh, storms happening and these museums and were being destroyed and so were their artifacts. So there was a mo movement to take a lot of this information and put it online. So the 50 states and the territories were extended this opportunity. And so um, that's how the Guampedia project started. And it's, uh, we, we went online in 2008 and have been online since then. And we started with 350 written entries, um, some photos, and we are now at 1,200 written entries. 3,500 digital photos and collections and e-publications and videos and audio as technology evolves, you know, we'll be able to, we continue to add. And so it's really become um, a resource, uh, an educational resource, uh, we've, but also uh, a way an, a way to connect. And the preface of, or the premise of Guampedia is to present the Guam's, initially it started out as uh, Guam's history and the Chamorro culture of the Marianas from local lenses, from the indigenous perspective. And, you know, as I was growing up in Guam, going to school, we learned a lot about American U.S. history and all of those things. And, you know, if we were able to learn a little bit about our island, it was during Mess Tomorrow and, you know, the legends and things of that sort. But, um, you know, wanting to provide this type of resource and show students that, you know, when you're to give teachers an opportunity to use these resources that uh, speak to and reflect the students they're teaching, because that gives them a sense of, wow, we're going to study it's about, about me, me yeah, yeah. and we're going to study about our island, yeah. really, you know, they can relate. that, um, so that's really been the genesis of Guampedia and our voyage. Uh, we've been online, uh, like I said, since 2008, and um, it's been about everything. And when um, this culture of connecting initiative really started when uh, COVID shut us down and uh, all of us had to hunker down and isolate. Um, and so with that, um, you know, classrooms had to, you know, were empty. And we thought, well, this is the time where we can uh, connect through fiber optics and use the analogy that, you know, our islands are connected by our seafaring tradition. The sea lanes connected our islands. Well, fiber optics has been connecting um, us to Guampedia, to the rest of the world, uh, throughout the Marianas and our Macronesia region. And we're just really trying to um, provide, uh, you know, it's not the end all be all, but it's really just as a, as a starting point and to have all of this information and then, you know, how we tend to search and you can just burrow down into all these other things, but to have that central point and mm -hmm. at least the portal and then to take you from there. So this project, and, and like you said, there's so much there at Guampedia. We could actually do a whole year of shows with, uh, just about what you have on Guampedia. Um, but today we're talking about your project, <laughs> Culture of <laughs> Connecting. Um, 
And if I understand correctly, like one of the um, projects you started with was when the Festival of Pacific Arts was coming to Guam and you wanted to let everybody know about each other, all these different cultures, I think it's like 27 or almost 30 different island nations coming to Guam. Um, tell us about this part of the project. Well, it will, you know, the hosting the uh, 12th Festival of Pacific Arts, it took the entire island community, Right. you know, I mean, activating and really preparing for 5,000 Pacific Islanders descending upon our island. And, you know, Hawaii will be doing that um, coming June. But um, in a sense, in thinking again about the classrooms and providing resources to the teachers, it's like preparing our island to receive and to understand what Festival of Pacific Arts is all about. So we created, we wrote a grant and create through the um, Guam Council of the Arts and Humanities. Uh, they were spearheading the uh, Festival of Pacific Arts. So our project was to bring the Festival of Pacific Arts, highlight the different countries and island nations, and uh, talk about where they are and their art and history, just to help provide information to um, prepare our community. And the idea is that we, and so we, made, we dubbed the, um, the special section People of Pacific Cultures or Pop Cultures. Mm -hmm. And that um, shows the whole, uh, you know, the whole region. But that with that initial start, that eventually we would like to invite the island nations and com island communities to con continue to build on the content that we have in their section. Mm. Um, and so that was really the, the um, emphasis of the project of um, pop cultures. And, it, you know, we were able to launch it about um, six months, uh, almost uh, eight months out to the festival. So we gave it, made sure the teachers were aware of it, so to help the community. And then, you know, um, I'm sure people were like, well, where's, where's, um, where's Solomon Islands? Where's, you know, Tuvalu? And so to be able to capture it, and um, we thought this would really um, help the community prepare for it and look forward to it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not saying that Guampedia was responsible, not at all, but that experience of um, immersing the island, the community, in this that Pacific experience, um, it was really transformative. Just being in the festival. I think you were, uh, did you attend? I wasn't that? at that one, but um, oh. I went to FestPAC in Palau when it was held. And I would have to say, it really put me, it made me much more aware of how actually removed we are as a U.S. territory from a lot of our Pacific Island culture in a way because at that time the other delegations were going around in their lava lavas and their, you know, uh, traditional attire and I'll speak for the CNMI, we were going around in jeans and t-shirts. <laughs> so um, what a great idea to, you know, um, as you said, prepare Guam to receive our brother, our brothers and sisters from the islands. Um, what was the feedback you got for the the project or this part of the project, pop culture? Um, well, it was definitely welcomed by our educators, and um, you know, just looking at the the analytics, it's like we did get a lot of. Um, uh, uh, visitors to the special section. So, and then just in general, um, the whole experience of the festival in Guam um, and just the feedback that, you know, I got from just family that attended that they really did feel like Pacific Islanders. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you talk about the sense of we're so removed, we're so westernized, yeah. you know, uh, Guam, like in the Northern Marianas. Um, and so it, was really to be in Hagatnya, you know, this is our land, but that it was just filled with artisans from all over the Pacific. Um, it just felt natural and it was like a big, huge cultural festival fiesta. Mm -hmm. um, that it was, it was really magical, I think, for the whole island in itself. And I mean, the crowning um, was the arrival of all the canoes, you know, Paseo. Um, coming into Hagatnya Bay, and um, and it made me think about so the first sighting of our ancestors when those uh, Magellanus's uh, uh, expedition, you know, arrived. It's like, well, this is about our first, the first people that arrived 3,500 years ago, wow, you nice know, to these canoes, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's like. Um, 
it, it helped to put us into that mindset mm -hmm. and capture that feeling of, you know, this is our Pacificness and um, get this sense of camaraderie across the different islands. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty of the Festival of Pacific Arts. And it got a lot of people in Guam really interested in it. And, um, and I think a lot of people are planning to attend the next one. Yeah, are you involved in all at all in that? And can you share with us the details of, well, maybe not the details, because I don't think our show is that long, but mm. a little bit of information about this year's festival. Well, I'm not involved in the official festival. You know, that's with the Council of the Arts and Humanities okay. Agency. They take the lead. Okay. Um, and, you know, they because the festival was originally supposed to be in 2020, but was, you know, because of COVID, so they yeah. had to postpone it. Right. Um, so they're kind of had to, you know, because they did a uh, um, calls for uh, delegates and unlike when Guam hosted it where we had you know 500 because we were the host um, delegations that go to the host are usually limited Smaller, you know yes. but, yeah so um, that's being spearheaded by the um, the council however um, with Guampedia we um, uh, we have partners out of the Pacific Island Development Program at UH the PIDP um, they've asked us we've worked with them they usually do the celebrate Micronesia annually um, and so I had presented during one of the online events but for for this year, the, the uh, Celebrate Micronesia Festival will be held in conjunction with the Festival of Pacific Arts. Oh, okay. So they've asked Guampedia if we would want to participate um, as part of the Marianas Showcase, but also in digital storytelling uh, film series. So we're working on curating some stories that we're going to be bringing to that. Um, so it's not an official uh, part of the festival planning or programming, but more just um, a programming out outside of the, um, uh, in addition to. In addition yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So pop culture, Pacific, uh, people of the Pacific is one of the, so we, shall we say, uh, subcomponents of uh, this project connecting, a uh, culture of connecting. Uh, the other one is related to this um, shall we say, visual aid we have here. <laughs> this was, I found, very fascinating uh, when I clicked on that link called uh, Micronesia and World Milestone Timeline. I, I, have to, I have to let visitors know that when they go to the website and they see um, that it says Micronesian, Micronesia Portal, mm -hmm. and then the timeline is actually, it looks like just a one-liner there. Click that link. What is the timeline all about? We, we and, and most of our projects, so just if I could just clarify a little sure. bit that uh, Guampedia is a nonprofit organization and um, <clears throat> Uh, we are a program affiliate of the University of Guam, but what uh, we get a funding a funding allocation um, from the Le Guam Legislature uh, every year to manage our operations, and then we write grants to build content. Um, and so, and you have a lot of content and great writers. I have to say, <laughs> it's it's been a community. A hundred and fifty people so far have been involved. Wow. Um, in just the you know um, uh, some of the special sections and and, uh, and that sort. So with this particular project, what the Guam Museum was getting ready to open up. And the permanent exhibition was, um, we really wanted to um, align a, a timeline, an interactive timeline on Guampedia with the exhibition of the journey of the Chamorro people. That's what's featured in the Guam Museum. So that was the initial um, grant project. But in looking at who, um, with the students and as an educational resource, looked at the classroom composition, the students in our classrooms, and we found that about 20% of the students um, in Guam class, public school classrooms, um, are from greater Micronesia. And so it's like, you know, this again, and trying to, um, broaden perspective of our, our, our students and our stories and how connected we are as a region. So we thought, um, no, let's broaden and instead of the Guam timeline, let's make it the Micronesia timeline. So we were able to do research and we came up with 183 milestones. Um, the, throughout the Micronesia. And then what we did was juxtaposed it to world events. 
and we thought it was it's a very we've done this before in previous timelines and students really are able to resonate with it because it's like okay they study a lot of world history but they hardly hear about their own history and so being able to make those connections it's like oh wow at this we were so it really um uh, helped a lot and so that's one of the re that was the inspiration behind doing this as a Micronesia timeline and then being able to scroll through it and the goal the hope is that we started off with 183 milestones that we continue to get um, more added on as we as we go along. What are some of these 183 milestones from Micronesia for example? For example uh, the first settlement the first people that arrived in our region um, they settled, and so based on um, uh, DNA studies, archaeological sites, and the, the migration patterns, that the first people that arrived in Micronesia is approximately 3,500 years ago, and that they were one of the first people to to um, have an open ocean voyage. So meaning no land in sight and traveling 1,200 miles. And they settled in the Marianas. Yes, yes, in the Marianas. And so that, and that's the beginning. And that's the beginning of our story. Um, and that it wasn't that they settled, they stopped. They continue to voyage because they come from a, we all come as, as uh, descendants or f being from this region, we are all descendants of voyagers. Mm -hmm. And so being able to start off with, you know, the first people in our region and then you just continue to settle with the outer islands, um, you know, Greater Micronesia being settled during the, we call it the Lati period, a thousand years ago, and that all the stone monuments throughout our region came up around that same time. You know, so like Nan Madal and Kos, uh, Lelu in Kosrai, Nan Madal in Pe Ponape, the stone money in Yap. All these stone monuments yes. around the same time. And the Lati and the Marianas. Yeah. Yeah. And there's uh, stone, um, there are stone pathways in Palau, in Belau. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it connects us and it really shows that the commonalities and our stories and how connected we are as a region. I just found it uh, very fascinating. I don't know, it may have to do with how my brain works. Like, you can look at this timeline and it will say like, okay, the Sphinx was um, built by the Egyptians 2,500 years BC, and then the Marianas was settled 2,000 BC. So you put that very important part of our personal history alongside world events, so that all the things we've learned in world history, oh, this was before the Marianas was settled. Oh, this happened after the Marianas was settled. It's, it's very um, enlightening, I feel. And can you imagine to a student, you yeah. know, and how, what it would feel, you know, because I wish I had Guampedia when we were going to school. <laughs> that's why you're here, right? <laughs> it's purpose. <laughs> that's right. And, and that's really what's so inspiring is um, because we, um, we use Google Analytics to look at our visitor profiles, you know, um, every month and the comments that we receive from people and from, and what we're also noticing is that we're getting older people. Oh, I thought you were going to say younger, but the, okay. You know, older, yeah. yeah, you know, we get students, yeah. we can see who our students are, but um, they're, king, I mean, I want to say older because I'm around that same age, <laughs> but we're seeing They're it. us, we're just all getting yeah. older. So people like us, are, <laughs> and what I'm seeing, and, and just in when I do outreach, when we do outreach um, into the community, um, retirees that are coming up to us, you know, my grandchildren are asking me all these questions. And I said, well, and I said, you know why you don't know the answers? It's because a lot of these things have just been found out. Mm -hmm. Like archeology span in the Marianas is really only about 60 years old. And the only reason why these, are, these archeological surveys were done is because of the development of the hotels. Mm -hmm. The irony, isn't yes. it? Um, but that we were able to find this information and that was one of the projects is taking some of these archaeological surveys and deciphering them 
and putting it into plain, you know, use uh, easy um, digestible information so that they can understand. It's like, well, this is what happened, you know, um, and there's so much, you know, people, it's like, well, history already happened and you have all this information, but, you know, so you're done. It's like, no, history continues to unfold, te technology develops, mm -hmm. and there's just True. more stories that we're finding out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the stories really, it's about making these connections from historical, archaeological, to oral history. You know, and the traditions and practices that we have now, we can still trace them over 3,500 years. And the idea, especially with DNA studies, you know, there's a lot more validation because, I mean, growing up, I, people, I went to school in the U.S. high school in California, you know, and the, the question or the, the comments we would hear just even growing up in Guam was, there's no real Chamorros left, you know. And um, well, DNA proved that wrong. <laughs> and we don't have to say anything further than that, right? Um, but it just really, um, I think it helps, especially in this globalized world, that mm -hmm. where our uniqueness, our stories, and where we come from even means more, more, so much more. Mm -hmm. You know, because the world has become one huge village. But, um, and so I think that's why there's this tendency of where do I fit? Where do I fit in this? And in our sense of, you know, talking about DNA, the blood calls, the DNA never forgets, it's there. Mm. And so people can feel that sense of yearning. Um, and I think that that's part of what resonates and having resources and, you know, to be able to, wonderful to be just able to Google and think, you know, find out what's this. And that's part of what I think also with today's generation is that they I refer to them as, you know, they grew up in this smart technology. So when we were kids, we were just told what to do and why, you know, but kids want to know why. Mm -hmm. They want to say, like, but why do we do this? Why do we mangini? Mm -hmm. What is it for? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the point? Um, they want to know. They want to understand. And so that's why I've, I've come across a lot of these manyaina, the uh, elders like, oh, how come we don't know this? And I said, that's why and I were helping. And you can, you know, th this can help you and, you know, send it, li send the link. <laughs> but, you know, it's a start. And it's just, you know, uh, again, it's an educational website, but, um, and there's a lot of information that's there. Um, and all over the World Wide Web, but what we do with Guampedia is we ensure, we fact check, um, unlike Wikipedia, which oftentimes is, you know, confusing. It's anybody's opinion almost. Yeah, yes. and, and that it's open, mm -hmm. so people can point. just jump in. Yeah. But with Guampedia, we do have like interpretive essays, but a lot of our entries are fact checked, peer reviewed, and then um, we not just put the entry, but we also add for further reading and links within it in the entry. Mm -hmm. So if you read about some, that, yeah. you know, and then you'll just click on that and it'll take you to find out more about it. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of weaving connections of, you know, topics that correlate. Um, and yeah, it's again, connecting. <laughs> We're chatting today with Rita Nalta, Managing Director of Guampedia, and we'll be back with more after this break. Half a day, Zantiro. I'm Leo Pangilinan with the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. We'd like to take a moment to thank our generous sponsors who have made possible the many programs in our community like this show. We couldn't have done it without them. And if you value the work we do and would like to make a contribution to our efforts, we ask that you consider making an in-kind or cash contribution to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Any amount is appreciated, and donations of up to $5,000 qualify for an educational tax credit. We appreciate your partnership and support. Sizus maasi, olomai, and thank you. Welcome back. Uh, Rita, could you um, share with us also about uh, the publications that you have online from the Marianas History Conference? Yes. Um, you know, this Marianas History Conference, when we first uh, started, 
Um, it was the thought that of reconnecting the Marianas through history and heritage. And so with every, um, and it would go between Guam and Saipan uh, every two years. And so we just completed the sixth Marianas History Conference. Congratulations. Uh, yes, here in Saipan, the um, NMI Council did such a great job uh, leading the, the way. and. Um, but with every uh, uh, conference, what we wanted to make sure is that, you know, once the conference is over, it's over. But the idea is that to create e-publications, because we're a website, we were able to do that, of each conference, the conference proceedings. Um, and so we've been doing that. We now have five of the five Marianas History Conferences that have happened and um, are available. Um, and so since the sixth one just finished last year, uh, we're doing that, uh, we're in the process of producing it. But it's a way to be able to, at any time, go back and the amount of work of, it's such an energy, I mean, you've, I think you've been host in some of our prior conferences that have been here. Or attending. Yeah, yes. an attendee, and just the energy oh, yes. of, you know, gathering all together and sharing these stories over the two days, and so much work, and mm -hmm. it's just so wonderful to see, and then you still be able to, from the very first one, I'm trying to remember, we started in 2010, 12, I think it was, 12. yeah, you know, it gets a little foggy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the the first one is that, you know, we may not be able to remember, but we could just click on Guampedia, go to the Marianas History Conference section, and look at the EPUB and see the presenters, their work. And so it's such a treasure trove mm -hmm. of Marianas stories. Right. Um, and so that's been a tradition of the Marianas History Conference. And it's and we also didn't want to make it a ac strictly academic. We wanted it to appeal to the general community. And when you say Marianas, right, it's got to be friendly. It's got to be welcoming and inclusive, mm -hmm. you know, to reflect that half a day hospitality. And so it, it really has grown and it's wonderful to see um, it grow um, and that we continue to um, uh, pr uh, provide the, the access to the information that's been presented mm -hmm. over the last five conferences. It's great for anybody who, who missed the speaker they really wanted to hear at the conference. Now they can read the paper online. Yeah, and yeah. since the, the fifth Marianas History Conference was at the time during COVID, so it, we had to go totally online. Mm -hmm. I think it was the fifth or the fourth. And so um, with that, um, on Zoom, we were able to now have recordings. So, um, and so this past conference was in person. And so it was a hybrid. But so this e public, the last, this, this publication and the fifth one has videos um, of the, some of the presentations and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So again, as technology, we're able to deliver even, you know, um, uh, Donald Benjola's keynote, as well as Polly Eric, you'll be mm -hmm. able to view those um, in the publication. Well worth, well worth watching. Yes. Rita, I really want to thank you for sharing today a small bit of what Guampedia does and for your work on behalf of Guam, the Marianas, Micronesia, and the world that is interested in our part of the world. Any final thoughts before we go? Well, um, it's really a community effort and, um, and especially our efforts in um, presenting the, uh, the culture, the history, uh, not just Guam, but the Marianas and our region and connecting and particularly, um, you know, it serves our, our local communities. But one of the things we're finding is that there are twice as many Micronesians that live in the continental U.S. than in our region. And, uh, and we see that in our Google Analytics that people are trying to connect. And, you know, I had a comment from someone who said, you know, I really liked your Marshall Islands, but can you show us more pictures? You know, so we're going to continue to want to connect and provide more content to reflect because our region um, is so much. And really, if you look at it in the context of the, the globe, is the last frontier that a lot of people don't really understand. We have the biggest ocean 
the deepest ocean and 2,500 islands and you know um, just so much to share and especially with our our, um, our world and trying to uh, help sustain itself not in our natural environment that um, you know there's science yes but if you look at our our um, indigenous culture our language and, and our ways of being that is sustainability we have in Micronesia 4,000 years of research and development into being a sustainable, thriving community. And there's a lot in our past and a lot in it that we're continuing to unfold that we can learn to guide us. And so moving forward, um, the future is uncertain, but if we look back and look at the knowledge and the, and the, the where we come from and our family, our people, we, there's a lot of knowledge there that can help guide us in tomorrow. So I encourage people to, you know, learn about where we come from, the land, the people, and you're going to be able to uh, learn more about yourself. Agreed. <laughs> Thank you for your work and for your time today. Uh, this is Masi. Thank you for having me. Our guest today has been Rita Nauta. She's the Managing Director of Guampedia. Check it out if you haven't already done so. This is your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Katherine Perry. Your Humanities Half Hour has been made possible in part by a major grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Democracy demands wisdom. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities. For more information or to share your thoughts, contact the Northern Marianas Humanities Council at nmhcouncil.org or on social media at 670 Humanities, that's 670 Humanities.